Hello dear friends, welcome back. Friends, we are discussing about the anatomy of the humerus bone, the external features of this bone and this was our previous lecture, we have introduced it and we have discussed about the upper end of the humerus bone, all the external features of it. You can go and watch that lecture. Now we are discussing about the shaft of the bone. So in the previous lecture, we, I have introduced a little bit the shaft of it. It is divided into two parts, an upper rounded part and a lower triangular part an upper rounded part and a lower triangular part right okay so this lower triangular part has three borders and three surfaces now let's go and discuss all those first of all there are three borders how many uh, what are those borders these are the okay let me keep it and it's uh, in anatomical position there is a medial border right this is the medial border then there is another border which is the lateral border so you can see here this is the lateral border of it right look carefully and then there is an an uh, anterior border so this is our anterior border totally right friends so how many borders it has the lower half it has three borders and three surfaces now let's go for the surfaces first there is an anterior lateral surface so if you keep the bone in, in its anatomical position you'll find that this surface is a little bit anteriorly but lateral and this surface is anteriorly but medial and this is the posterior surface so anterior lateral surface in its anterior lateral surface if you look at this bone right in its anterior lateral surface there is a tuberosity which is called the deltoid tuberosity and here is the insertion of the deltoid muscle the tensions of deltoid muscle so this is called deltoid tuberosity as you can see on the screen i have shown you here this is the deltoid tuberosity and then there is a radial groove present there and what is that there is a radial groove present so here you will find that this this depressed part this is called the radial groove. So in its in anterior lateral surface, these two important external features are found, the uh, 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 deltoid tuberosity and the radial groove is present there, right friends. Then there is an anterior medial surface and in its anterior medial surface, right, this is the anterior lateral surface, this is anterior medial surface, you'll find there is a foramen there which is called the nutrient foramen so you can see here this is the nutrient foramen so in in the anterior medial surface there is a nutrient foramen you can see here in this bone i have also shown it so there is a nutrient foramen and then in the posterior surface there is an oblique ridge and then there is a radial groove so in the posterior surface right this is the posterior surface here is a uh, what is there there is an oblique ridge is there right and then there is a radial groove so these important features are present in the in the surfaces of the shaft how many surfaces are there there is an anterior lateral surface there is an anterior medial surface and then there is a posterior surface and all the external features of these surfaces are, are shown there i have shown you now next friends about the lower end of this bone the external features of the lower end of this bone first of all it is a little bit expanded side to side so if you keep it in its anatomical position you will see that the bone is expanded from side to side and it is flattened anterior posteriorly so you can see here right friends okay then about the external features of this bone you can see in the image i have shown you that's a little bit expanded and from side to side uh, what are the external features present in the lower end of the femur bone so the first is the capitulum and capitulum means small head and where is that capitulum present in this bone so look here right here is on the lateral side right friends capitulum is present on the lateral side of the lower end so this is the lateral side and this is the capitulum the small head and this is for you are radius right here will be the articulation of the radius bone with it so we say this is the uh, capitulum for the head for the depressed part of the head of the radius bone so there is the capitulum and it articulates with the head of the radius bone i have written there right so in the lower end of the bone there is the capitulum then there is a trochlea present there which articulate with the trochlear notch of the 
uh, which bone of the ulna bone so here we have the ulna bone and here is the trochlea this is the trochlea right you can see on the image also this is the trochlea and this is the uh, trochlear notch of the uh, ulna bone so they will make a joint here and they will articulate like this right friends so you can see there so here we have the trochlear uh, this is the trochlear totally I hope you can see it here so this is the trochlea and in the image also you can see there is trochlea and it articulate with the trochlear notch of the ulna bone then there is a medial epicondyle and with part is that look carefully this is the medial epicondyle which I am holding in my hand this is the medial epicondyle let me color it with black color this is the medial epicondyle right friends this is the medial epicondyle and then there is a lateral epicondyle present there so this is your lateral epicondyle right so medial epicondyle present there yes this is the medial epicondyle and it's a little bit narrow and pointed right and the lateral epicondyle is not it's a little bit broader right friends then there is a lateral epicondyle and then there is a lateral supracondylar ridge is there so which part is that this is the lateral uh, yeah lateral supracondylar ridge is there you can see with the red color I have shown this is the lateral supracondylar ridge and then there is a medial supracondylar ridge is found there so this is the medial supracondylar ridge I hope you can see it right friends so there is a lateral supracondylar ridge there is a medial supracondylar ridge and then there is a coronoid fossa present there so you can see here I will show you with this uh, green color not with this green with this blue color so this is the coronoid fossa here right so anteriorly there is coronoid fossa and posteriorly there is olecranon fossa right posteriorly there is olecranon fossa so after coronoid fossa you can see I will show you this is the olecranon fossa this big fossa which is present on the behind on the posterior surface of it so olecranon fossa and this is coronoid fossa and then there is a radial fossa also present there so this part is the radial fossa uh, above the capitulum there is the radial fossa this one right friends and this one is the coronoid fossa and this is the olecranon fossa right done so these were the important features in the posterior and the lower end of the humerus bone so we are finished with the external features of the humerus bone so I hope you like the lecture friends and I hope you have learned something from all these lectures and we have the notes of them we, I, I prepare all these notes for my friends if someone wants me to send you these notes so please tell me in the comment section I will provide you all these notes and all these images the beautiful images that I have all about all these bones so friends see you guys in the next lecture we will discuss about the radius and ulna and then we will go towards the carpal metacarpals and the phalanges okay friends till then Allah Hafiz